Hello, it's Richard Bauer here, Yamaha brand ambassador, working from home today uh, and we're following up the video that we looked at last time which was the super articulation voices on CBP805. Today we're going to look at the even more extra special super articulation 2 voices. We have to look at these on 809. Um, super articulation 2 uses so much processing and, and, and so much data to make these amazing voices that it's only possible to have these on an instrument with the very best tone generation system that we have and that means it's the highest Clavinova CVP in the range has these voices and for example things like the the, the late generation Tyros they have a few of these SA2 voices. Genos has some of these SA2 voices as well. Uh, so it is the very biggest and best instruments that we have that are capable of, of um, producing these voices. So for example, if we take a look at the uh, brass section in voices, we'll see that in the brass solo section, there's a lot of SA2 voices, things like the flugelhorn and the trumpets and the trombones, for example. If we go to the brass ensemble, there's, there's no SA2 voices. It's not possible to use SA2 technology on a voice that you'll play chords on. These are exclusively solo voices, and the reason for that is it replicates exactly all the nuances, the slides, the mordants, the trills, uh, so many things that a real solo instrumental player uses when he plays his instrument. And it's not possible for a group of those instruments to, to do all of those things. So these are solo voices only and today we're going to look at just a few of those incredible voices and how easy it is to get the most out of them. We'll take a very brief look at how these voices are actually produced on your CVP 809 um, and you really don't need to worry about this. Uh, I, I've, I've spoken with, with a couple of the Japanese technicians uh, and they've explained to me really well how this technology works uh, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've still no clue because it defies everything that I was taught about how sampling works. Essentially what the engineers at Yamaha have done is made a voice that has, as you play key on, has a selection of heads. So there's a selection of starts to the particular note that you're going to play that then morphs into the body of the sound as you hold the note down. And when you release the note on key off, it also selects its choice of endings for each note. So if we look at a quick diagram here on key on, it will, for example, take um, a selection of three heads, three starts. Now lots of the voices have many more than this, but it, it's, it's just easy to show you one with three. That then morphs into three bodies, and then a selection of three tails. So if we have a quick look at how many variations that gives us just with three heads, three bodies and three tails, there's actually 27 different paths that that one particular note can take from key on through the body and the tail as you release the note. Now some of the sounds have many more heads, bodies and tails than that. So you can start to imagine how uh, this is kind of like watching a kaleidoscope. Every note is different. It's just incredible listening to these super articulation two voices in action. The important thing is even though I don't understand how they've done this, how they make it work, there's no need for you to understand it either. The important thing is it does work and it works really well. 
and it's actually really easy to use. So let's take a look, for example, at one of the SA2 voices, and the first one that we're going to look at is one of the saxophones. When you select a saxophone, or indeed any of the other SA2 voices, there's an option to press the I information icon at the bottom of the screen. That for newbies, and uh, for people who have not been used to these SA2 voices before, is a really good idea to do. Because it gives you an indication of the sort of things that you will benefit from if you play in a certain way. So, for example, the instructions and the information for the saxophone is as follows. For this voice, the operations below allow you to add specific instrument effects. So, if we play this voice with legato, in other words, playing smoothly, or we play it with a trill, playing one note quickly after another. If we use the left pedal, or if we use the centre pedal, we'll get a different effect. Now, this is really important to stress, that all of these effects, all of these different nuances and changes to the voice, are sampled from the real instrument. So if it's not possible for a real instrumentalist to make these sounds, then it's not included in the voice. And that's really important because it means that whatever you do with these voices, it's possible to do it on the real thing. And that's great because it means that you can be very, very accurate and very faithful to the way that a real player plays that real instrument. In times gone by, um, a saxophone, for example, would be sampled from start to finish um, with, the, with the tonguing and with the body of the sound and then with the key off. And that would be encapsulated in one note. So every time you played a note, you would have this tonguing. Got this kind of spit into into the uh, into the sound, and it it, it sounds like this. <laughs> Now, whilst that sounds like a saxophone, of course, it's not really the way that a saxophone player would play. A saxophone player would, would tong the first note, so you get that attack. But after that, he'd play much more smoothly. Um, and in this case, all we need to do, as the instructions said, is play legato, play smoothly. Have a listen to the difference. <laughs> Now, isn't that so much nicer? Uh, and the only difference there we've made was rather than playing quite staccato and having this thing going on uh, on each note, simply by playing smoothly, that tonguing only comes on the first note. After that, it's much more legato, and it's, it's done in the way that a saxophone player would play a phrase of note in one breath. Speaking of breaths, it's really important to remember that if you take a breath on a saxophone, it means that then you can do other effects. And you'll have heard in that little phrase that some of the notes bent. They bent into the note. If we take a look at it again, see that I'm actually taking my hand off the keyboard. I'm physically taking a breath before that slide into the next note. Just take a look again. <laughs> So 
So that works really well. And it's not a difficult thing to do. Just kind of think, OK, I want to slide the next note, make a gap, play the note, slide, done. No need to worry about uh, pitch bend wheels or anything like that. You can control that from the keyboard and that's, that's really useful, but actually really easy. Happy days. Let's take another voice and this is the jazz flute. This is a, a great fun instrument. One of the instructions that we're given on the information page is to hit the note harder and uh, more firmly. That gives us this, this fantastic uh, jazz flute flutter, um, very reminiscent of, of jazz music, of course, but also Latin music. I'm going to use the pedals this time as well because I want to do a, a, a keyed glissando on the end of some of the notes. So the pedal, you play the note, press the pedal, let the note go, keyed glissando. Take a look. Really easy. Takes a little bit of practice. But once you get it, the effect is just... Ah. Isn't that fun? Uh, what a great sound. I'm going to take you to an unusual voice now. This is the Ullian pipe. Um, we call it Irish pipe. There's two variations of it. There's the Irish dance, which of course you'll use for jig, jigs and reels. Um, and there's an Irish pipe air, which is much better for uh, laments uh, and slow airs, as it, as it suggests. So let's play you a really old piece of, of Irish music um, and just keep an eye on how I'm playing this, just making little gaps for bends this time into, into some of the notes. It's, it's such an ethereal sound, this very um, reminiscent of the sort of Braveheart, um, Lord of the Rings, that kind of that kind of music, but this is an old Irish piece of music that's well over four hundred years old. Um, enjoy. <laughs> Now, if that doesn't stir the emotions, I don't know what will. Um, just, just an amazing sound. Um, let's do something a little different here. Keep with the Irish theme, but this time we're going to mix um, one of the Irish pipes together with a Celtic violin. Both of these are SA2 voices, which means both of them have articulations. Um, both of them will do different things on gaps, on, diff on maybe uh, playing at intervals. They will definitely do things differently on legato. But the really interesting thing is, because they're doing different things, you're getting two effects for the price of one when you combine these voices together. We're going to play this with a piece of music that's one of my favourites to play, and it's, it's a sort of New Age Celtic music. Um, but take a listen at how the violin and the Irish pipes work together 
beautifully here. Um, it's kind of an almost shut your eyes moment and just imagine the guys on stage. fun again lots of fun again and that type of music or maybe big band music using the saxophones and the trumpets in with the brass it works really well and this is one of the reasons why the the, the sounds that you play chords on it, it doesn't do this SA2 thing because it's really nice to have an SA2 voice over a non SA2 voice and that means that you're hearing the articulations coming from the lead voice from the trumpet player from the saxophone player um, but the rest of the band aren't doing it and that's kind of important because if everybody was slurping and slobbering all over the shop it, it really would be quite a racket so if you have the lead voice doing all of these just great articulations he's allowed to star he has the starring role sparkling over the top of the rest of the guys in the band who play this big broad chord or accompaniment underneath and it works brilliantly well let's go back to a solo voice just for this last example this is a brand new SA2 voice we're introducing SA2 voices all the time as we go um, as time progresses this is the flugelhorn and it's it's one of the most emotional sounds i've ever heard from a keyboard um, so we'll leave you with this um, tune using one of the ethereal uh, styles the ambient styles on board your cvp 809 with this just quite mind-blowing uh, flugelhorn voice so Take the time to explore some of the SA2 voices for yourself. We've looked, we've looked at five. There's, there's, there's dozens, dozens and dozens of them. Um, but it'll give you the chance to, to have an explore through your instrument if you're lucky enough to have an 809. Um, we'll look at styles next time. The backings and the accompaniments that you see me using on the videos so far. We'll open that side of the instrument up um, and see how that will improve and add so much more fun and realism to your playing on Clavinova 809. So in the meanwhile, enjoy your music, enjoy exploring through the SA2 voices and we'll see you soon. All the best.